Hi, I'm Jen. Welcome to So Much Yarn, a podcast about my adventures and often misadventures in quilting, sewing, and knitting. Thank you so much for being with me here today on this snowy October day. Well, it has been a hot minute since the last time we were all together, and I am sorry that it has been so long. But when I ended this school year, I went into teacher recovery, and I went into recovery of trying to get some energy back and trying to rest after the year that it was. When August hit, it became gear up again to what it was going to be like to teach in the pandemic. Now I know I had been teaching in the pandemic from March until June, but by August we knew what where we were gonna be, if we were gonna be finally in a building or part-time in a building or online again. So August we found out that we were gonna be back in our buildings. And then it became, what does that look like? And can we still do what we do or not? And So August really became plan and communicate with people and talk to people and organize to see if you can do the program that you, you have. I'm a music teacher, if you don't quite know, and that's okay, I'm a band teacher. So what does that mean? Playing instruments in a pandemic. So there was a lot of stuff that I had to try to figure out and organize and, and sort through um, in August, and that took August. Well, September became survival once we hit back into our buildings. And may I just say, the first day that those kids walked into my room was a glorious day. It was so nice to see them all um, again in actual per people, people, persons, uh, in life, in real life, and not uh, their digital selves. So it was so great to see them all there. But then, yeah, September became, what is this like to teach and to sanitize every surface and clean and disinfect and everything like that? By the way, if anyone has a recommendation for a great hand cream, I would love to know uh, because I don't know, the one that I seem to be using combined with the sanitizer that my school has makes my hands smell like Play-Doh. Not exactly what I was going for with that. So if anybody has a great one, because between the disinfectant and the sanitizer, and then we've got cold winters coming here um, in, in Canada, my hands are being eaten up. Uh, with it. So if anybody has any recommendations, that would be great. So we are into the middle of October now, and it is great to be back with you to talk about creating and making. And I do hope that during this time that you have found some solace in your creating, in your making, in the crafts, even if it's just enjoying what you have in your stashes. So what have I been up to? Well, one of the first things I ended up doing was I ended up making a wall hanging quilt for a friend of mine. It is called the DMMQG Mountains. And now truthfully, that stands for the Denver Metro Modern Quilt Guild Mountains. And that is their logo. And this uh, is, a, is a pattern by Pink Door Fabrics. It makes a wall hanging. And what I did is I made this wall hanging for a friend of mine who was moving away from the mountains where we live to the, to the ocean. And so I wanted to make her a little going away gift. So I made this, this uh, little wall hanging for her to hopefully hang in her studio or on a wall. Um, I used just some batik fabrics that I had in my stash, and it is a paper piecing fabric, which is why we can get the peaks on the mountains as perfect uh, as they can. So for those of you who don't know what paper piecing is, paper piecing is where a pattern comes in basically paper, hence the name paper piecing. Now it's not the same as English paper piecing. That's different. This quilt back here is an example of English paper piecing, which are itty bitty little pieces of paper. A paper piecing pattern comes with things that look like this. So you have these fabulous 
sections with different fabrics that you would then put together. And you would sew basically on these lines. So you will always get these kinds of points. So this is not a, a wonderful looking example, but this is an example of a paper piece. So the back looks just like that. I hope that focused well for you. And then the front looks like this. So you have these perfect pieces and perfect points on your, your project. Then when you're done, this is the good and the bad part. Truthfully, at once you're done everything, you then rip all of these papers out from the back. And so you sew with really tiny, tiny stitches. Um, so it basically creates like a perforated edge so that it's easy just to rip the paper out. So that's how I did that project there. Um, paper piecing. Now, some people also use something called foundation piecing where they'll take a piece of interfacing, draw the design on and then stitch on that. And then they don't take that foundation off. That would be typically if you're going to put it in a wall hanging, something you're not going to wash, like wall hanging or a pillow or, or things like that. So again, that was a wonderful little pattern from Pink Door Fabrics. Uh, and, and the mountains are actually the logo for that modern quilt guild. So the next quilt that I worked on this summer is called The Bricks Baby Quilt by Amy Smart. And she is of the quilting blog Diary of a Quilter. This was a free tutorial that she had on her blog and it makes a great baby quilt that's 42 by 54 inches. And this went together so very, very quickly. I'll show you what it looks like. So there we go. There's some of the little baby quilt right there. What's nice about it is it really is just rectangles and squares that you you make um, and then cut up and then put back together in your blocks, which is a lot of fun. I was able to put it together in, in an afternoon, which is really nice. So if you need kind of a quick, fast baby quilt, uh, it works wonderfully. I made this for my husband's coworker who is having a baby. Um, pretty soon actually, so I should probably get this quilted faster. Um, and it's made of, like I said, fat quarters, uh, about seven or eight of them, and then three quarters of a meter of a background kind of fabric. So I went with this, this white one. Um, if you looked at it really close, and I don't think it's going to show up on the camera, but it has this grungy kind of look to it. Uh, this is another piece of it in a, in a red. So you can kind of see that it has um, these, these different kinds of grungy colors. Like this has grays and dark reds and light reds in it. So it's this grunge line from Basic Gray. And so I use that as my background fabric. And I picked these fabrics up at Sugar, Sugar Pine uh, Quilt Shop, which is in Canmore, Alberta when I was out there in the summertime. And they have wonderful bins all over their store of fat quarters in all the different colors that you can go through too. So if you want blue fat quarters, you've got a whole section of blues and grays that you can pick together and put together. And so it was, it was wonderful. This is the first time I have ever done this pattern and it will not be the last. Uh, it is a wonderful, wonderful pattern. And today, um, just before popping on here, I went over to my favorite quilt shop, which is Out of Hand, and picked up some backing fabric for this. And I found this one, and I thought it was the sweetest ever, and it's called Hubert and Sorrel. And Hubert and Sorrel are, I am hoping to goodness that those little pigs come through. And there is Hubert and Sorrel, and their adventure. So this is gonna be the back of that piece. I'm really hoping you can see those little pigs right there. So that is going to be the backing of that. And then I have a basic gray, um, again, that's the fabric company. So another this in a dark, dark blue, which will be very, very pretty. While I was there, I also picked up 
Um, some more background. I have another baby quilt that I need to make. So I picked up this wonderful, I love dots. I could do and quilt and polka dots forever and ever on man. And that, so I picked up this one with these lime dots because the fabric is all lime. And then I picked up this spectacular Kerry green polka dot. I told you I have a polka dot problem. Uh, for the back of one of my friend's quilts. And so there it is. I'm going to get on that as well. So that's what I've been doing in my quilting. I have done nothing in sewing at all. Uh, I just, every time I got to it, I thought, no, not right now. I'm going to go read a book. <laughs> and that's what I ended up doing. Anywho, so we'll pop on over to knitting now. Knitting, I have done a bit of it for sure. Um, some of my projects though were so lengthy and took were so time consuming that sometimes I don't have so much to show but that is okay. So one of the things that I'm very excited is that I finished my Hoarfrost shawl by Andrea Mallory and this was on my make nine list for this year and now this is upside down. I'm so sorry. Oh and it's got <laughs> and it's got it's got thread on it. So this is what it looks like in the end. I cannot get it all into the screen, but there it is. So it's got this beautiful stitch pattern there. I hope that came through. And then it's got this really pretty lace section right there. And this yarn again is by the wonderful folks at Sassy String Studio. And they, this is their color ruby. And I, as I think I told you in my first podcast, I wasn't sure about the color. I was going to do blue, but I do always blue. And they said, well, what about this beautiful ruby color? And it is it is perfect and I love it and I'm really happy and it blocked out huge and I can't wait to to wrap it around me and and wear it more. So that is one of my famous objects, the Hoarfrost by Andrea Mallory. The other thing that I finished um, and I was working on this one kind of on and off while I was kind of in Zoom meetings uh, back in kind of March until June and this is the Snuggle Down Cowl by Jules Hill, who is So Sweet Violet. Now this is not the true size. It is supposed to have two more sections. So it's supposed to be, it's supposed to be a little bit longer than this. However, I ran out of mohair because what it is, is it's a combination of mohair and uh, fingering weight. So I used these minis from Evil Little Goat that I had. They were 10 gram minis. And, and then I had some Aloft left, which is the Knit Picks mohair in this blush color from a sweater that I had made my daughter Ella. And then all of a sudden I ran out. So I couldn't finish the last two colors. So it's just a, a, a sh short little cowl and you know what it's pretty nice just to snuggle in around my neck and and uh and it was very it was it was a lot of fun I would definitely make that one again but this time make sure I had enough mohair what can you do and the last fo that I'm going to show you today even though I do have a couple of others um is this one is called leftover city cowl by Casey Knits and this is a colorwork cowl. I'm just trying to find, there we go. This is a colorwork cowl. And this is, um, I knit this in Fearless Yarns, her beautiful rainbow color. So I finished it and I love it. I didn't realize how much I liked a fingering weight cowl. Um, I think I'm going to put it on this way instead. Yeah, I didn't realize how much I loved a fingering weight cowl to kind of wear and be warm and nuzzly against uh, in my coat kind of thing, or even in my classroom. I'll be truthful. My classroom some days is 26 degrees and other days it's 
like 12 degrees. I never know how to dress. So I always take shawls or, or cowls or things like that uh, with me. So this is the leftover city cowl. Um, again, oh heck. Hope the woo, there we go. <laughs> I, I would definitely make this one again. I uh, like it's 10 grams um minis that that is that's all those are they're just 10 gram minis the ends this gray which was just some, I don't know what it is I just had it had it laying about uh this was 20 grams so I finished it on both sides that way so that we have the leftover city cowl and it's awesome you should make one especially if you've never done color work before it's a great one to do though 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 I would gladly take advice on how to I'm just trying to find the end I apologize um how to change colors kind of up the up the backs like when you're changing colors to do a clean color change because that I will say was not my forte. My color changes were a, a hair messier than I thought. Anyway, definitely an awesome one to make. Now with October comes the wonderful cow that my friend Lolly hosts, who is Ocean Loops. She hosts a cow. She's done this. This is her second year and it's called Tookpalooza. And Tookpalooza, well, you make toques. Uh, for basically it's October through November and you make toques and last year was the first year and this year there is, I think it has grown exponentially uh, in in numbers and it is so wonderful to see there have been some incredible toques that have been made um, in the FO thread or even if I'll put the hashtag below if you want to check out some of the other amazing uh, toques that are in there. Now, a toque, for those of you who don't know, is a hat. Uh, it's a in in Canada. Our winter hats are called toques. That's the word. Uh, other places, I guess, call them beanies. But in Canada, we call them toques. So we're in Duke Palooza. Now, I've already finished four toques uh, in the time that we started this. So our October first was when we cast on. And I finished four of them, but I will show you that next time we were together. However, I am going to show you three that I have on the go and we'll explain that a little bit. So the first one I have on the go is the Home Body Hat by Helen Stewart. So there it is there. I'll just try to pop it up. It is a ribbed hat with a very, very cool kind of faux cable -y design. And this was last year, this was in her Knit Vent um, package that she had. Knit Vent is coming up. The first pattern will be released next week. And I'm very excited about that. And this is, as I said, her home body hat. It's a DK weight hat. This is in the wonderful Wool Baron, uh, again, who's a Canadian dyer. This is her oak. So it's a one of a one of a kind color in her base, her DK base called Everything But Socks. So it is a, it is wonderful. It is, it is a great, this is the second one I've made of this. It's a really fun, mindless kind of pattern. So I've been kind of knitting this um, while I've been watching TV. Because my husband and I are going through a, a collection of movies right now. The next one that I have on is the Held Together Hat by Lindsay of Lost and Fond. And this is a, and I've never done anything like this. This is a marled hat and it is a main color held together with something else. That, and the main color carries all the way through. Now, some people have done two of the main colors. So this is one of my main colors and they've done this held together and then this color feeds up all through the rest so i'm just have a lot of yarny bits here so let me show you so my main color is this blue 
and then I fed it into this greeny color and then this purple I don't know if it's coming up really well it comes up a little bit better in person we've got this greeny color or purple color rather and then uh, back into the blue and it's a folded brimmed hat uh, in this ribbed pattern now for me what I ended up doing is I ended up using this um, <laughs> this ancient arts I'm um, just looking sorry in her, their sock NATO this beautiful color here and I will put the name underneath because I cannot find my tag for the life of me at the minute and I'm sorry I meant to write it down but there we go so it's a it's one of their beautiful blues um, colors and I'm holding it together with this blue here as I've shown you sorry for strings everywhere and this is one of the cascades. So I'm holding th these two together for my main colors. And then I'm carrying this one up with the green and the purple. And those two again were heritage in the cascade heritage base. And again, I've been taking that one. I had a, a webinar yesterday and I just knit on that as I was listening and then I would take my notes here and there. And so that is, the, again, the held together hat. And the last one was one that I saw last year and wanted to do it immediately. And it is the Christmas Cracker Hat by Faye Kennington, who is Yuki Knits. Again, another Canadian. Uh, well, she lives in Canada anyway. And this is the Christmas Cracker Hat. It is a color work hat. I'm working in Estelle Double Knit um, because I've used the Estelle Double Knit before for color work and I found that it really showed the stitches very nicely. So I decided to go with that again. I don't have very far on it. So I'm just gonna move my needle so I don't lose my stitches because that's not awesome for me. And this is what I've got so far. I've got this really fun bright red ribbing into this pattern the red and white pattern and then I'm just working in this navy blue and white section it's going to be this it's going to be the amazing snowflake section so that is what I have been working on uh, for my Tupalooza I have a few other things for Tupalooza that I am planning and Hello, back, sorry. And guess what? While I was grabbing my yarn that I was gonna show you, I found the tag for my held together hat. So as I was saying, I'm gonna go back, backtrack for a minute, I apologize. So this one, as I was saying, is Ancient Arts, and they are dire from Calgary. And this is their Superwash Merino. It is a heavy fingering sport so it's making it a little bit thicker but that is okay with me it doesn't bother me and it is in there passion eight so I was wrong about the socknado so I'm okay with that so again passion eight is the color of that I'm glad I found that so what else am I hoping to make during Tukpalooza I'm hoping to make the minted hat by Andrea Mowry, and I'm hoping to use this fantastic sport weight uh, by Lily and Pine in Bubblegum. I hope you can see that gloriousness there. And it gets paired with her Dandelion Lace Baby Suri Alpaca in Graffiti. And that is what that crazy gorgeousness looks like. And I have a friend who who made this combination together. And I said, oh yeah, that has to be a hat and that's going to happen. Uh, and it's a beautiful cabled, cabled hat again by Andrea Mallory. Then the other one I wanted to make is the Mountain Mama hat. And this was a pattern that was featured on Hugh Loco's uh, website a little while ago. I'll put the details below. And this is in her Hue Loco Bulky. In this is the colorway Girl Talk. Girls Talk. Let's 
So there we go. It is so gorgeous. It's this moody grays and greens and, and burgundies. Oh, heavens, it's gorgeous. And then it is paired with the mohair lace from Hugh Loco, Hugh Loco, excuse me. And this is in fact, in infatuation. That's what it is. It's written in, yeah, infatuation. Sorry for tripping over that. So that, so these, once you don't throw them upon your floor, so these two together, do you notice a theme here with, with mohair and yarn? Anyway, so those two together are going to be the mountain mama hat. And there are a couple of more that I'm going to make, but I'll share those with you next time. Before signing off today, I just want to thank you so much for being with me. And I look forward to our next adventure together. And I hope that you are finding joy in the journey. Take care. Bye for now. Thank you.